Stinson Beach, California, August 7th, 1945. Dear Oppie, you are probably the most famous man in the world today, and yet I am not sure that this letter will reach you. But if it does, I want you to know that we are very proud of you. And if it doesn't, you will know it anyway. We have been irritated by your reticence these past few years, but under the itchy surface we knew that it was all right, that the work was progressing, that the heart was still there, and the warm being we have known and cherished. I can understand now, as I could guess then, the somber note in you during our last meetings. There is a weight in such a venture which few men in history have had to bear. I know that with your love of men, it is no light thing to have had a part, and a great part, in a diabolical contrivance for destroying them. But in the possibilities of death are also the possibilities of life. You have made history. We are happy for you. You may well ask why uh, uh, people with a kind heart and hum humanist feelings, why they would uh, go and work on weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> When J. Robert Oppenheimer was born in 1904, the atomic bomb was not yet even science fiction. He was educated at the Ethical Culture School in New York and mastered Harvard's curriculum in three years, summa cum laude. He spoke six languages and seriously considered becoming an architect, a poet, or a scientist. But it was his love of physics that led him to England and Germany in the 1920s, where the atom was beginning to yield its secrets to Einstein, Rutherford, and Bourne. European scientists would later remember him as the quick and eccentric young American who devoured both theoretical...